Hello there guys and welcome back to another episode of Rebuilding Histon. It is episode 30 of the series and coming up today we've got an away match against Gosport. So before we get into the game who against the team that are currently sitting 6th in the league, let's take you through what's been happening since you were last with us, which was a double live con which involved the unfortunate 2-0 defeat against uh, League 1 Colchester in the first round and the penalty shootout victory against Truro in the Southern League Cup. Fortunately, we followed that up with another defeat, this time away in the FA Trophy, second qualifying round match against Redditch. Uh, to be honest, it all turned on its head as soon as Callum Frew was sent off after 42 minutes. He picked up, a, picked up his second yellow card very quickly after his first yellow, and that pretty much changed the course of the, of the match. We didn't play particularly well. Alex Meany and Royce Gamble were the two goals for Redditch, and they thoroughly deserved it, and we didn't based off the player ratings. The defence wasn't very good. Harry Osborne and Steve Goddard had poor games. Yeah, and we just didn't, we just couldn't create anything. And the fact that we had Marshall Tung and Jack Frund, which was an opportunity for both those guys to uh, make a make a name for themselves, we didn't really create anything. So really unfortunate, and we have to we were out of the uh, FA Trophy underachieving on what the board expects. But they did say they understood why we were knocked out by Redditch. So silver lining in the end, I guess. When we were out of, but unfortunately we we're out of that, and we we're not going to be able to get any more finances from the, from the uh, cup competitions this season. We did bounce back though with a 2-1 victory at home to Taunton who were bottom of the league at the time. It looked as if it was going to be another frustrating game though as Carl Olide opened the scoring for Taunton with, 70, with 15 minutes remaining before Justin May scored in the 85th minute and then Jack Friend scored a penalty pretty much for the last kick of the game to ensure that we managed to, we stole us pretty much three points away even though based on the stats I think we deserved it overall in the end. Yes, again, a lot of fouls and a lot of yellow cards. Very fortunate not to get a uh, sending off right there. Um, yeah, we still something we need to work on in terms of our discipline. But I just don't know how to fix it right now, as I've mentioned in the previous episodes. But fortunately, we didn't out of that game. We didn't get didn't get a red card from that, and we then moved on into the next game, which was an away match against Hitchin, which Marshall Tung managed to actually score his first goal of the season. It was it took him a while, and he had hadn't scored for about twenty plus twenty thirty games or something like that. He was on a really bad dry spell, but he took a shot. Nice little goal. It was a nice little finish. Keeper probably should have done better, but it was good um, for Marshall Tung to get on the score sheet finally after such a long goal drought. And he needed to do that because Josh Gre Jack Friend hasn't really been firing, and Josh Green needed the time to uh, rest up, etc. I think also he was injured during the time. No, he wasn't actually. I stand corrected. He was injured in the last game from what I, from the last time you saw us when we played against Truro, but I think he was only just coming back into fitness. He was, not, he was on 96% conditioning, but we didn't really need him in the end. Hitchin did have their chances, but we held on and managed to get the uh, three points. Unfortunately, though, then our unbeaten league record was finally ended with an away match against Weymouth. And again, the game kind of turned on its head when we had a sending off thanks to Alfie Davidson picking up his second yellow card after 51 minutes. Callum Frew on his return picking up a yellow card, as you do. Jack Hunt, though, opened the scoring for Weymouth before all the uh, the red card happens. And then Josh Green equalised after we had a we were down to 10 men. Before we and we tried to go for it to try and steal the three points, Jack Hunt scored a second goal and ensured that Weymouth took the victory and handed us our first defeat of the season. So it meant that we needed to bounce back in the next game because um, Weymouth are actually now in a really, really strong position in terms, in terms of the league. They're just behind us actually If when we go to the league table in a minute. But we needed to bounce back from that and we managed to get a slender 1-0 victory away at Ashford Middlesex with a makeshift midfield. Liam Tomzet and uh, Danny Waldron in the... Uh, team there. Apologies, I accidentally put Liam Tonset's stats up there whilst I was explaining what's happening in the match. Callum Frew got us suspended again, which is the reason why we have got Waldron and Tomset in the team because he picked up a yellow card and therefore meant he was banned for two games or something like that. I think it was that where he had picked up ten yellow cards overall for the whole season. Justin May scored the only goal of the match in a game in which not many chances were created from by Ashford Middlesex and we dominated the possession so in fairness, it could have easily been a draw, but I'm happy to have stolen the uh, the three points and managed to get back into winning ways very quickly as soon as after that uh, Weymouth defeat. We then followed that up after three straight away games with a with a massive home home stand one two three four five home games and that started off with a three one victory at home to Worcester. Good result again for us. Justin May, Tyler, Taylor McKenzie made it two 0 after 16 minutes. Jordan Lonchar pulled one back for Worcester before Josh Green made it 3-1 before half-time. And based off the stats, nothing really else happened in the game. Um, I think Worcester had a couple of chances. We had a couple of chances to extend the lead. But Taylor McKenzie had a fantastic game at 8.6. Josh Green was finally back among the goals. And we, were we took another good 
vital three points against a team that was near the bottom of the league. And we then followed that up with a 5-3 victory at home to Banbury. Jack Friend scoring a hat-trick against his former club. We were actually 5-0 up by the 54th minute. Uh, Jack Friend scoring a hat-trick. Uh, Josh Green scoring uh, either side of um, Jack Friend's second and third goal before I, he added a second after 54 minutes. But then it kind of fell a little bit away in the second half. Taylor McKenzie scored an own goal for, to allow Banbury to score their first goal. And then Robert Swaby, who's actually had a pretty good season for Banbury, scored a brace. I think he's on he's on 18 goals this season for uh, Banbury after being released by Fulham at the end of last season, having yet to play a game, having failed to play a game for them. But he's had a resur resilience or oh, resurgence at Banbury, and he scored two more goals today. And all that hour, and two of those three shots ended up being goals, which was a bit disappointing. And I was quite a, kind of upset with how we played in the second half, considering how dominant we were in the first half. So I had a little just and blast at them after the game, uh, but unfortunately it kind of didn't really have a much of an effect on us as we ended up drawing against a team that was near the bottom, or is it, it was like third or second bottom of the league in Gloucester. Um, but based on the stats, I guess Tom Morris, pulled, oh, Josh Green opened the scoring after the uh, in first half injury time, but then in second half injury time at the end of the game, Tom Morris pulled the goal back, which made ensured that Gloucester got a, an equalising goal and ensured that we dropped points in the end. And look at that, 39% possession compared to our 61%. And we dropped points there, which was, it was really annoying, the fact that it was, it was their left-back that scored. Out of all the players on the pitch, it, could, it had to be their left-back. Yeah, one of those things, I guess. And uh, it was dropped points, though, and it was a chance to actually close the gap on Hereford. Because at the time when we played Banbury, Hereford actually drew a game or something like that. But then, once we drew against uh, Gloucester City, that meant that, um, and Hereford won, that meant that they extended their lead once again. We then bounced back, however, against um, AFC Portchester in the Southern League Cup and advanced to the uh, the quarterfinals for the first time in this save. Hogan, oh, Luke Chepcott opened the scoring for AFC Portchester before Hogan Ephraim scored, and then Marsh Katung scored two goals in the space of uh, less than a minute, I guess, based on the uh, the timestamp. Based on the, the stats, we completely dominated this game. Ever since AFC Portchester scored, we were like, right, we're not letting this happen. Let's get this win, and we duly delivered, and we managed to get through to the next round. It was a rearranged game as well. It was on a Friday night because of the fact that the previous or the last time it was the, 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 the I can't speak, I'm sorry the last time the the time we were supposed to play this game it was it, the match got postponed because of a uh, waterlogged pitch and that's why we had to got we, it got rearranged to a Friday night and therefore our league game against Chippenham was then rearranged for a Monday night two days before Christmas as you can see on the 23rd we managed to come out of this game with a 5-2 victory. And when, remember when I said that was frustrating that Gloucester scored with a left-back? We managed to score with a left-back this time, but it was towards the end of the game. So it doesn't really... Oh, towards the end of the game, and we already wrapped up the points anyway, and Chipman was just trying to get back into the match. Josh Green and Marshall Katung both scored before Josh Green added a brace after 49 minutes. Then Callum Frew scored a trademark free kick to make it 4-0. Jerome Dawkins then pulled one back for Chipman before Kevin Carrillo made it 5-1. And then another goal from Dawkins in the 90th minute, resulted in the game finishing 5-2. Important result though, another vital three points. I think Hereford also dropped points in this game. So now we've actually closed the gap on them and we've played a couple more of our, a couple of our games in hand now, and which means that the table's looking a little bit more interesting to us. Before we get into that get the game against Gosport, let's show you the league table as it stands. And as you can see, we are currently sitting four points behind Hereford with a game in hand. So if we win our game in hand against Hereford, oh, not against Hereford, Win our game in hand that we've got, we will be only one point behind Hereford and really keeping the pressure on them at the moment at this stage of the season. They've lost, they've only lost, they've lost twice this season, but we've drawn two more games compared to them. So, yeah, it's going to be really, really close. I think I think it's going to be very, very similar to what we had in the matchup with uh, Salisbury last season. But I'm hoping this time around we'll be able to uh, beat Hereford or beat the top first place team and get promotion automatic promotion ourselves. I think they're uh, at home against Taunton. No, they're away against Taunton. So it should be a win for them based off the, uh, the form. Although they haven't been in very good form in the last few games. They've actually got knocked out of the Southern League Cup for the first time in a couple of seasons. They've actually won, they won the Southern League Cup the last two years. Lost out to Banbury. Then lost to Whitehawk in the, uh, the FA Trophy before drawing the last two games in the league. They should get back to winning ways though in the next couple of games. But they do have Weymouth who currently sit in third place. As I mentioned before. When Weymouth beat us, they, they actually overtook us at that stage of the season. But they have actually played three more games than us. So hopefully if we get those games in hand, uh, we get those wins, we can just pull that gap again ahead of that third place spot 
and also increase the gap over that sixth place spot, which currently stands at 12 points. And hoping to increase that today as we are now playing Gosport today. So, without further ado, let's just get into the match. I've rambled on a little bit too much with the, all the games today. Um, let's get into this game. It could be a quite a tough match away at Privet Park. This is a team that I think had a really, really good run in the FA Trophy a couple of years about ago in real life. But please correct me on if I'm wrong. I think there was a band or something like that that was advertising them how well they were doing. And unfortunately, I think they actually lost in the uh, the, the final. But please correct me if I'm wrong in the comments about Gosport. Um, so here's the team we're going to go for today. Reese Bills in goal. Goddard, Osborne, McKenzie at the in the centre-back pairing with Kirill on the left, left back. Alfie Davidson and Callum Frew are in the midfield roles with Justin May and Hugo Nefro in the wings. Marcus Gattung and Josh Green are currently sitting up front. We've actually had to put in a new goalkeeper in the substitutes bench because Luke Colkin has actually gone down with a hernia and therefore is out, out for four weeks. We've had to call up our young goalkeeper that we signed at the, end, at the start of the season, Kareem Lawson. Looks a pretty good keeper, two-star rating. So I'm hoping he's starting to develop a little bit. He's got a couple of stats up already this season with 10 aerial reach and 6 throwing. And let's hope we can keep his development going. I've kept him available for the other 23, so hopefully he will keep going there. And also, fantastic news is that James Difford is finally back from injury. And he's going to come off the bench today because he's still lacking a bit of match sharpness. And the, uh, the fitness people have said, only give him 45 minutes. So I'm actually going to have it also make a quick change to the... The bench because Luke Harding's on the bench and we kind of want a uh, attacking midfielder on actually instead. I'm going to go for I'm going to go for let's see for Carl Pritchard instead. Let's see if that makes it, see if that makes changes anything. So, yeah, but James Difford is back in the side and he's on the bench today. So hopefully, if things aren't going well against uh, Gosport, he can come into the team and create an instant impact. Yes, he's on only on 56% match sharpness, but I'm hoping he has a little bit of quality based off his star rate, if you guys remember. He's only two and a half stars, actually. I think he was three stars before he got his injury, so I'm hoping he can get that star rating back up a little bit as soon as he starts playing games again. But as soon, let's get into the game right now. Marshall Tong's been on form. Josh Green's been on form as well re in recent games. So I'm going to keep, keep, keep that uh, partnership going with Josh Green at advance forward and uh, Marshall Tong at poacher. So, let us get into the match today. I focus on defensive positioning because we're up against a team that's um, looking pretty good. Oh, is just outside the playoffs and fighting to try and get into the playoffs. And I think we need to shore up our defence a little bit after the last couple of games. Especially as we conceded quite a few. Or conceded that goal against Gloucester, who against a team near the bottom of the league. See, as you can see down at 22nd. And then conceding goal, or quite a few goals against Chippenham and also Banbury in uh, recent weeks. So, I'm hoping... Could show up the defence a little bit. Maybe do a smash and grab or something like that against uh, Gosport. I hope it doesn't come to that, though. I hope we actually dominate the game today and we uh, get a comfortable win. It's going to be tough, though, away from home as we go up against a 4-4-2, it looks like they're playing. Uh, Herc or Reynolds we've got to keep an eye on because they could easily be a advanced playmaker or a uh, ball playing, ball uh, deep line playmaker or whatever. The, the role that Callum Frew plays, pretty much. Jake Chambers Shaw, I've heard of his name. I don't know where he's from. He's actually played for Cambridge. I think. Oh no, Marlon and Tiptree. I, I, I don't know why that name rang a bell. It just sounds like a uh, a player that could be dangerous. So I'm going to close him down. I think he was... Oh, he's a central midfielder. I think he might be a good to close him down anyways. Let's see if there's any more. Advanced forwards. Let's get, get him closed down. Warren Bentley, what are you? He's a poacher, so let's uh, close him down as well. And then I think this guy's probably a centre-back. Yes, he is. Or full-back, sorry. And I think that's their goalkeeper. Yep, it is. So, let's get into the match now. Uh, let's go to the team talk first. Get, pick off where we left off exactly, because uh, we played really, really well in the last game against uh, Chippenham, despite conceding a couple of goals. But, yeah, we've conceded five, we've scored five goals, so what we can't really complain, the fact is, we, don't, we didn't have to pay many, uh, any clean sheet bonuses because of that. But, that's not an excuse for them to concede goals. Um, as we now begin the game, it seems to be taking a little bit longer than expected, but... Uh, we're underway. Gosport kicking off from right to left at home. Uh, ball up towards um, their strikers, but Davidson was able to cut it out. Herc was on the ball there, and that's the end of the highlights. We've got an instant highlight, though, from a free kick. Cox with the ball in, and it's a penalty. Steve Goddard has conceded a penalty for a foul on number four for Gosport, probably their centre-back. And it looks like we're going to be 1-0 down here, unless Bills can pull off some heroics like he's done in the past. Number nine stepping up for Gosport here. I don't know who is called. Proctor stepping up to take the penalty, and he's scored. It is 1-0 Gosport. This is not the start that we wanted, 
and not the, not the start of the episode that I would have liked. All right, here's the penalty. Proctor with the uh, stepping up there, slotting it past Bills. Bills went the right way though, so um, did did his best, but unfortunately was un was unable to keep it out. And we've got to bounce back, pretty much try and get a reaction straight away. But Goddard's not having a good game though, as we uh, cut to another highlight. McKenzie clearing away from Simpson. Weymouth have won nil up as well, so that means we've dropped down. We've dropped down to third. Hurt a ball towards Musunguma and a ball into Proctor, and it's two nil. Goddard's had a nightmare already, and Proctor's already scored twice in the space of less than 20 minutes. And we're really not of the races today. This is probably going to be our second defeat of the season. They've had two shots, two on target, and two goals. They've been very clinical today. And we have just been all over the place at the back here. Uh, another instant highlight, though, we've got on with the throw-in. He had, didn't give it away this time. So he's kind of redeeming himself a little bit, if we can score from this. But uh, Ephraim is lost out to Musu Wunguma, the guy who scored the provided the assist for Proctor in the second goal. We've now got it back here. He's through in a little bit of space. Might pick up someone out, but he's lost out to Reynolds. Elston's now put a ball through towards Proctor. He might score a hat-trick here, but Bills is equal to the task. That's their third shot, third on target, and their second clear-cut chance of the game inside 20 minutes. I'm not very happy with how we've started the game here. We need to make some difference here. I'm going to make a, a team talk. Uh, show some passion here, because it doesn't look like we're really at the races today and it's not it's unacceptable right now okay throwing on this right hand side a ball a throwing towards Goddard Ephraim to through takes a shot May takes to get to the deflection and May is there and we've scored our first shot on target and it's now 2-1 with uh, five minutes to go before half time Goddard with a nice ball to Ephraim who drills it in through takes a shot comes off a defender and May is just there to, to get the uh, the rebound off the uh, the pinball off the, uh, the gospel defender it's now 2-1 it is now half time and we are actually going to tell them off despite us getting a uh, back in the game here I think we need to tell them off here because they've been really really poor Goddard especially at a 6.0 probably should have really taken probably should take him off here um, I'm actually yeah, I'm going to do so Harry Osborne's going to switch to right back and I'll bring on Kai Smith at centre back for Goddard and see if that makes a difference Hogan Ephraim has not had the greatest of games at 6.4 we've got to keep an eye on him maybe oh I didn't bring Steve Reed on I'm stupid um uh, yeah, it's typical, isn't it? As soon as the guy, the other guy I was considering uh, bringing on the bench is now not available on the bench, and I picked the wrong one in terms of the uh, attacking midfielders. So uh, we're going to have to just have to bounce back from that. We're making one change at half time. Let's see if we could, if this uh, dressing room blast and a bit of reshuffle of the back four will ensure that we don't concede any more goals and we're able to get back into this game as soon as possible. Uh, ball up towards Proctor, but McKenzie's there to head it down, and that's the end of the highlights. Right, 60 minutes gone. It's time to bring him back. Welcome back, James Difford. I mean, um, Josh Green's not having the greatest of games, but if we have James Difford on the pitch, he maybe his rating will get a little bit better. And uh, they've had a really lethal partnership, as we remember, way back before, before Difford got his injury, especially last season. So, uh, welcome back, James Difford. Straight into the fire. Let's see if he can make redeem himself after being out for such a long time already this season. Let's hope he can... Uh, redeem himself straight away and score. Looks like Hereford have taken the lead against uh, Taunton after a um, a very long a long period of the game where they were uh, only well, they were drawing nil nil. Weymouth have actually been have been pulled back by AFC Porchester, which is interesting, as we're now going to make our final substitution here. Hugger and Ephraim has had a shocking game. Um, I don't know what to do though with the tactics. I'm going to pause it though, and we're going to change it up a little bit. We're going to bring May to the centre. Ephraim is going to go on the left. And Carl Pritchard is going to go on the left as well. And we are also going to push forward because we need to try and get that uh, equalising goal. Let's see if he can uh, get get some motivation here as we come onto the pitch. Um, let's see, has, has that change been made? Yes, it has. And we're now going to go on attacking. Okay, throw in for Gosport Borough. Here's Mutsu Wuguma. I think that's how you pronounce it. Weymouth have now actually gone behind against AFC Porchester. So as it stands, it's going to stay as it is in terms of the league. Uh, we're only one point ahead of Weymouth as it stands. But here's Davidson in the central midfield role. He might lose out to Herc, and he has done. Bentley, a ball up towards Evans. A ball up towards Bentley again. So a nice little 1-2 between the two players. And they've scored, and it's 3-1 now. I think that's mainly because of the fact that we pushed forward, got on overload, and tried to get a goal back. And that has resulted in uh, Gosport getting a get goal. And they are now 3-1 up, and it's probably no way back for us here. Uh, they've really dominated the game based on the stats. Three clear-cut chances, ten shots, five on target. We've only had one shot on target the whole game, which has been really, really disappointing. Especially as a team that we should be... If we want to be challenging Hereford, we've got to be a lot better than this. 
It's as simple as that. With uh, two minutes remaining, yes, Hereford have got all the money, but uh, we should be doing a lot better than this. But we've got a highlight here. Through a ball into ball in towards Difford, but it's claimed by Lewis. And it looks like Gosport will now run the clock down with uh, a minute to go. Uh, but a ball has somehow made it through to Proctor. Bentley's now onto it. Smith, for some reason, is not running. Bentley's now taking a shot, and he's now scored his second of the game. And that's really, really poor defending. It seems like the guys just gave up as soon as the Bentley got the ball. Smith was like, oh, just go, just, just go past me. No, he just doesn't seem like he's running very fast. Bentley's just well onto that. The other guy at the right back, or the other centre back, I think, was on, was not aware of that either. And it's another through ball that's uh, cost us again. And this is based off only 45% possession of that gospel have got. So, again, we're not using the possession to full effect here. As the ball's played up towards Difford, there's one down, knocked down towards Green. He's taking a shot. And that's our only our second shot of, on target. Uh, but it's well, it's such a tame effort. And Lewis is there to keep it. And it's a 4 1 defeat. Absolutely abysmal today. Really, really sorry about that, uh, uh, viewers, that we've had a really poor game. Um, it's very, very rare that you guys have seen a, very, a poor match from us so far in the, the live comms. I know we've had nil nils today in, the, in this season, but to see that, a 4 1 defeat against the team in sixth place, is really, really disappointing. And I'm really, really upset with how the, the team has performed. With 55% possession, two shots on target, six shots in total, compared to their 11 and 6. And they managed to get four goals out of that. It's unacceptable. That's unacceptable. And we need to bounce back immediately, pretty much, in this for this next game away at Brackley. We've also got a way going against Truro, who are in seventh. So uh, we need to really bounce. We really need to bounce back from this, especially as to as it's a long uh, road road trip. I think we've got at the moment, as we had a, a five-game homestand in the last bit of the, uh, the, the last set of fixtures. We've now got a four-game road trip away against Brackley. Away against Truro, away against Barnstable. Teams we should be beating if we want to be fighting in the playoffs and fighting Hereford. So we've got to bounce back straight immediately from that. So that's my rant over there. Apologies for apologies for that. Um, yeah, it's just it's just a, it was just such a off colour performance. It's our worst performance I'd say of the season, and it's come at a pretty crucial time when uh, Hereford are now now have extended their lead over us. Fortunate thing was that Weymouth lost, which was a uh, a bonus as well so apart from that let's actually now move on to what game we should do next I could do the Southern League Cup quarter final against Weymouth but I'm also tempted to do Merthyr Town at home Mangotsfield at home is there any interesting games that are coming up that are against teams that are in the the playoff hunt I mean all these teams oh, Ox City are in seventh we've already done them though this season already played them quite a few times already this season St. Neots away Hungerford at home AFC Porches away Hereford away, I kind of want to do net at some point because that would be a good match and then we can do Hitchin at the last game of the season. So it's probably going to be a game, either the Southern League Cup match against um, Weymouth in the quarterfinals, Mangotsfield at home as well as, po as a possibility, or Merthyr Town at home. So it's going to be one of these three games. I'm, I'm undecided as to what match I'm going to do next. We'll then do Hereford and then we'll do Hitchin at the end of the season. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode despite the shambolic performance that the team pr pr produced today. Look at the ratings for the uh, defenders and also the midfielders. It's really, really poor. Need to get back to winning ways on New Year's Eve against uh, Brackley. But despite that, apologies for that. Apologies for that. I was just having a little yawn. Um, if you guys enjoyed the episode, despite the result of today and the shambolic performances I've mentioned before, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you for the next part, which will hopefully which will either be Mangotts Field at home, Weymouth away, or Merthyr Town at home. So until then, I'll see you later.